Hello, my brothers. Hello, my sisters. Another beautiful, blessed day today. Just to be in the presence of the Lord right now today. Another day right now just to give him the thanks right now. Just to give him the praise right now. Just to give him the glory right now. And to magnify and shout out his holy name. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. I say God is good all the time and all the time, God is good. That's why it's so important each and every day to give him all the things, praise and glory. That's why it's so important to pour your heart out to Jesus. Because at the end of the day, that's the only thing that you need. That's the only thing that you need to hold on to is Jesus. He got your back. His love endures to the to the very end. He is love. He is kind. And he is patient. He is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. He will never leave you or forsake you. He will never do you dirty. He will never do you wrong. You must seek him first. Mm -mm -mm. I said you must seek him in this kingdom first. Then get on your knees and pray. And worship him. Then open up your Bible, which is right here, the will of God, which is his words and his promises, lives forever and forever and forevermore. He said that you can ask anything in his name. Good God Almighty. And he said he'll do it for you. But he wants you to trust him. He wants you to have a relationship with him. He wants you to be committed to him. And he wants you to be dedicated to him. He wants you to be hungry for him. And he wants you to be thirsty for him. That's why praise is so necessary. Some of you right now, the only time that you want to thank him and praise him, when things are going good. But as soon as life takes you to another direction, you run away. Why run away when God never ran away? He's still right there on the throne. He's still performing miracles. He's still performing wonders each and every day. That's why I'm going to thank him. I'm going to praise him in the midst of my storm, in the midst of my battle, in the midst of this ugly place, in the midst of my wilderness. I'm going to thank him. I'm going to thank him. I'm going to thank him alone that he's blessed me with my breath, and he's blessed me with my health and my strength, that he's given me another chance and another opportunity each and every day. I'm going to worship him. I'm going to praise him. And I'm going to glorify him, even if I have to do it by myself. Good God Almighty, yes I am. I'm in love with Jesus. I'm hungry for Jesus. I'm thirsty for Jesus. I'm committed to Jesus. And I'm dedicated to Jesus. I'm not going to stop. It don't matter how hard life might get. I'm going to thank him. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to pour my heart out to Jesus each and every day. Glory to God. I magnify and I shout your holy name each and every day for who you are, Jesus, for what you have done for me, Jesus, for what you're about to do for me, Jesus. That's why I glorify you and I magnify your holy name each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak the blood of Jesus. I am covered through the blood of Jesus each and every day. No one coming from Jesus. Not my wife, not my children, not my family, and sure not my child. Nobody comes from Jesus. He is numero uno, and he's going to stay numero uno in my life. Glory, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Well, I'd love to give a shout out right now today to all my brothers around the world, around the universe, around the globe, all my sisters around the world, around the globe, around the universe, and every young man and every young lady. Thank y'all guys so much. Thank y'all guys so much for always choosing Jesus' ministry. Words cannot explain how thankful I am, how grateful I am, how honored I am, and how blessed I am for every last one of you. It's because of you. That's why his ministry is still going on right now. Thank y'all for being a participant. Thank y'all for being so faithful. Thank y'all for being so obedient. Thank y'all for allowing me, allowing me to be part of y'all's life and path. And I want to say thank y'all for being part of my life and path. Thank y'all for always praying for me, and I'm thankful that I'm always going to continue to pray for y'all. Because we're in this thing together. We're here to please God and to honor Him and always put our faith and our trust in Him, no matter what. So if I'm thankful, I'm grateful, I'm honored, I'm blessed, how much more do you think our Heavenly Father God is? 
He is so thankful right now. He is so moved right now. He is so pleased right now because of your faithfulness and your obedience that you have towards him and his ministry. Right now, he's telling me to tell you right now today. You know who the ones who's faithful. You know the ones who's obedient. He said he's doing a new thing. Not an old thing. Not something that everybody else know about. But he said he's doing a new thing right now in your life. Something that you'll never imagine. Something that you'll never thought would happen to you. He is doing it right now. He's already preparing it right now. God and his angels is going to work on your behalf right now because he said he's doing a new thing because you don't dwell on the past anymore. You forgot about the former things. You start putting your faith in him. You start trusting him and you start seeking him. You start honoring him all your might. You start pouring your heart out to him. He said, now, I got to do a new thing. Right now, Jesus is doing a new thing in your life. He's doing a new thing in your health. He's doing a new thing in your finances, in your dreams, in your business, your ministry, your child's life, in your home, or whatever area it is. He said he's doing a new thing. He tells you that in the book of Isaiah 43, verses 18 through 20. He said, now springs up. And the only thing that springs up is a seed that you have planted. The only thing that springs up is a seed that you have planted, that you have water, that you spoke life over, that you spoke prosperity over, that you have faith in, that you have trust in, that you have hope in. Now that same seed is springing up. But I'm going to go a little farther with it. I'm going to go a little deeper with it. Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 says, There's a time under heaven for everything. It was a time when you planted that seed that you didn't see your seed grow. It was a time you thought the seed that you planted months ago and years ago, you thought maybe, why haven't it sprung up yet? You say, well, I guess the seed is still dead. I guess God forgot about me. I guess God is not going to do a new thing. I guess God overlooked me and he started looking for somebody else. I guess I'm just going to throw in a towel. But when you throw in a towel, you realize that God threw the towel right back. Because he said, that's a time. He said, the time now, your seed is springing up. He said, it's time for me to do a new thing right now. He said, I can't do it tomorrow. Because tomorrow's not promised to need the one of us. He said, I can't do it next week because next week is not promised to need the one of us. He said, I can't do it next month either. He said, I can't do it next year. He said, I have to do a new thing, but he said, I got to do it right now because my heart is into it right now. Your faith is into me right now. Your obedience is into me right now. Your patience is with me right now. But he said, I have to do it, but I got to do it right now. Good God Almighty. He said he been thinking about it. He said it's been on his mind. He said now it's time for him to give birth to you right now. He said get ready to receive your blessing right now. Your breakthrough right now. Your deliverance right now. Your double portion right now. Your more than enough right now. Your harvest right now. You better receive rain right now. You better receive that contact right now. The resources right now. You better receive that phone call right now. That email right now. That text message right now. That letter that you've been waiting on. You better receive everything that you've been asking for, praying for, and wishing for. He said I'm doing a new thing but he said I'm doing it right now. If you believe it right now, if you declare it right now, if you have stepped your name on it right now, if you decree it right now, I want you to give Jesus some thanks for it right now, some praise for it right now, some glory for it right now, because Jesus is doing a new thing right now in the month of July in 2019. Get ready to receive everything that God said he's going to do for you right now in Jesus' name. Now give God some praise for it right now if you know that he's doing a new thing. I said give him some glory right now if you know that he is doing a new thing. I'm giving you the thanks for it. I'm giving you the praise for it in advance. Because I know one thing for sure, Jesus, that you're doing a new thing in my brother's life, my sister's life, every young man, every young lady, and even my life. We know that you're doing a new thing in the month of July 2019. And we ain't taking no for an answer. We're exercising our faith, and we'll let you know the only thing that we have going for ourselves is our faith and our trust and hope, even though we don't see it, Father God. But we know, we know for a fact that you're doing a new thing in our life right now. Amen? Amen. God gave me a word today, and he gave me a message today. And somebody's been going through some things right now. You've been going through a little struggle right now. And at one point, you didn't want to ask for help. 
but then you know you put your guards down and you end up asking for help because you really thought the person that was going to help you was really sincere about helping you. Then you realize as soon as they help you, they start talking about you. They start announcing it like it was something to be announced. You didn't have to do me like that. You didn't have to sabotage me. You didn't have to stick me in my stick a knife in my back. You didn't have to do me wrong like that. But God said by them doing that, they have already received that reward. Somebody know what I'm talking about today. Somebody's going through what I'm going, going through right now today. I don't know who this word's for. I don't know who this message is for. But God said they had to receive their, their reward. But my point I'm making, you didn't have to do me like that. Amen? Amen. And before I get started, I always like to take the time out to give our Heavenly Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, this came. Thank you enough for this awesome and beautiful, blessed day today. I can't thank enough for this word. I can't thank enough for this message. I just can't thank enough for everything that you've done and everything that you're doing right now. I can't thank enough for the air that we are able to breathe. I can't thank enough for our health. I can't thank enough for our strength. I can't thank enough for the food that you have blessed and prepared and put on our table. I just can't thank you enough for the clothing shoe that you put on that bag. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus, how you provided. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus, because you're making a way out of no way. I can't thank you enough for your healing. I can't thank you enough for your blessing. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus, how you moving mountains on my behalf right now today. I just can't thank you enough for the Holy Spirit right now. I can't thank you enough for the angels that's joining us in praise right now. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus, because you have your righteous right hand right now today. And you are lifting us up right now. And you have us covered through the blood of Jesus. I just can't thank you, thank you enough for your words. I can't thank you enough for your promises. I just can't thank you enough for your faithfulness and your love. I just can't think of for the open doors right now. I can't think of for the door that you have closed. I just can't think of for the connection, the resources. I can't think of for the help. I can't think of for the double portion. I can't think of for the, the, the more than enough. I can't think of for the overflow. I can't think of for a rain. I can't think of for a harvest. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I just can't thank you enough. Jesus, I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify and shout out your holy name the way I do. Because I can't thank you enough. That's why I always put my faith, my trust, my hope in you every day, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. As long as I have breath, I can't thank you enough. As long as you bless my health and my energy, I can't thank you enough. As long as you give me another chance, another opportunity each and every day, Jesus, I'm going to express my love to you because I can't thank you enough. I can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. I just can't thank you enough. It doesn't matter if I got to do it all by myself. I'm letting you know right now today, Jesus, I can't thank you enough. I can't thank you enough, Jesus. I can't thank you enough. I can't thank you enough. You didn't have to do me like that, my brother. You didn't have to do me like that, my sister. You didn't have to do me like that so-called friend. You didn't have to do me like that family member. You didn't have to do me like that supervisor. You know exactly what we was going through. You know exactly what we are facing. You know that we was not able to pay our rent. But you volunteered to help me to pay my rent. And as soon as you volunteer to help me pay my rent, then you want to blast and tell everybody what you had to do for me. You didn't have to do me like that. I confided in you and I told you what I was going through personal. And soon I told you what I was going through personal. You took out your trumpet and you blew the horn and told everybody what I was going through. You didn't have to do me like that. You didn't have to do me like that to tell everybody what was going on in my household. You didn't have to do me like that to tell everybody what was going on in my marriage. You didn't have to do me like that to tell everybody what was going on in my finances. You didn't have to do me like that when you know I ain't had no place to stay. You didn't have to do me like that if you volunteered to pick me up to go back and forth to work and you knew I was struggling. You didn't have to do me like that. 
You know, at the, at the midst of my time, I was hurting. I ain't had nobody to turn to, but I, I ran to you because I thought that you was a, a concerned friend. I thought that you were a concerned supervisor. I thought you were a concerned family member, but you end up turning my, turning back on me and you just put all my business all on social media. You didn't have to do me like that. Come on now, somebody. Somebody knows it's like what I'm going through right now today. You told somebody in your family what you was going through. And what did that family member do? They threw it in your face and started telling everybody what you was going through. They knew that you didn't have nowhere to stay. And they told that you can stay with them. And they you know everybody know that you homeless. Everybody know that you got evicted. You didn't have to do me like that. You didn't have to spread my business like that. You didn't have to put me on front street like that. You know I ain't have money to put food in my house. Now everybody know I was hungry. Everybody know I ran to you. Everybody know what I was going through. Now you don't tell everybody about my marriage. You don't tell everybody what my wife did to me. You don't tell everybody what my husband did to me. You didn't have to do me like that. Some of y'all have combated, combated in some of y'all pastors. And this, you know, the pastor don't went on the pulpit. Don't tell everybody your business. Pastors, you didn't have to do me like that. Reverend, you didn't have to do me like that. Apostle, you didn't have to do me like that. Bishop, you didn't have to do me like that. Whatever you call yourself, you didn't have to do me like that. You supposed to be a servant of God, but why did you do me like that? Why did you tell the whole congregation what I was going through when I confided in you? I don't know about you, but I've been through that before. It was time I was hurting. It was time I needed help. It was time I couldn't even put food in my house. It was time I couldn't even put gas in my car. It was a time when, when time got rough and I needed to go stay with somebody to get back on my feet. And the first thing they did, they couldn't wait to pull their trumpets out. They couldn't wait to pull their saxophone out. They couldn't wait to pull their tuba out. They can't wait to get their piano out. They can't wait to get their flute out. They can't wait to get their cymbals out. They can't wait to get their drums out and beat and blow and tell everybody what I was going through. You didn't have to do me like that. I'd rather struggle than tell somebody. I'd rather suffer than tell you because I know that you're going to tell somebody. I know that you're going to run your mouth. I know that you're going to sabotage me. I know for a fact that you're going to backstab me, but you didn't have to do me like that. You didn't have to do that brother like that. You didn't have to do that sister like that. You didn't have to do that young man like that. You didn't have to do that young sister like that. Some people can't hold water, my brothers, my sisters. They can't hold water. But God said, don't worry about that. They had to receive their reward. They got what they want. That's why some of them right now today, they blessing run short. Right now, a lot of them don't receive no more blessing because they got the reward by telling everybody what you was going through. You see it on social media each and every day. You can turn, you can go on Facebook right now today. You'll see somebody spreading somebody's business right now. You can go on Instagram, somebody doing it right now. You can go on Snapchat, somebody doing it right now. You can go on Twitter, somebody doing it right now. You can go on Periscope, somebody doing it right now. But you didn't have to do them like that. You didn't have to do them like that. They told you something. They were, they were, they was basically confiding you. Why did you do it if you didn't want to help them? You should never volunteer if you's going to talk about it. You should never volunteer if you's going to preach about it. You should never volunteer if you's going to pull out your trumpet and your flute and your drums to beat about it, to make a song about it, to make a beat about it, to make a fuss about it. You didn't have to do them like that. And you didn't have to do me like that. I know you're proud. I know you're feeling right now today, my brothers, my sisters. I've been there before. I've been there before. I trusted somebody. And as soon as I opened my mouth, the whole world knew what I was going through. It was a time when I didn't have nowhere to stay. First thing they did was throw it back in my face. It was a time when I didn't have money to pay a light bill. It was a time when I didn't put food in my house. And as soon as I asked them for help, they talked about it. They threw it back in my face. Yeah, it belittled me. Yeah, it hurted me. But I said, golly, they didn't have to do me like that. My mother always told me, my father always told me, if somebody throw it back in your face, they mean they really didn't want to do it. If they got to sing about it, they didn't want to do it. If they got to preach about it, they didn't want to do it. If they got to throw it back in your face, they really didn't want to do it. So I really don't want you doing anything for me if you're going to sit there and do me like that. 
somebody going through that right now today. Somebody's facing that same situation right now today. They want to help, but they want to tell you, talk about it too. They want to know your business, but they want to spread it too. So you really don't want to do it because you ain't doing it for the right attention. So why are you going to do me like that? Why are you going to do him like that? Why are you going to do her like that? You don't want nobody to do you like that. So why are you doing the same thing? You think it's a joke? You think it's funny? You think it's, you think it's a, a, a game? Somebody's feelings is on the line. Somebody's feelings is at stake right now today. They are trusting you. It was a time I was went to this church, my wife and I. And um, we were just sitting there and you know, we were talking to the pastor. And we were friends with these, with this couple. And the first thing the pastor said to my wife now, well, you know, so-and-so having problems. I looked at my wife. My wife looked at me. And I tapped her. I said, wow, he didn't have to do them like that. Because whatever that man told you, that was personal to you, pastor. You ain't had no business telling my wife now what that gentleman told you. You didn't have to do them like that because if you did him like that, you'll do anybody like that. But you didn't have to do him like that. But we're going to hear what the word of God say. Please turn your Bible to Matthew 6. And we're going to read verses 1 through 3. That's Matthew chapter 6. And we're going to read verses 1 through 3. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. And may God bless you. He said, be careful. Not to do your acts of righteousness before men. To be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. See, he's telling you, be careful. He's telling you, be watchful. You know, if they, tell, if they talk about somebody else, they're going to talk about you. If they sing a song about somebody else, they're going to sing a song about you. If they ain't beating on them drums by somebody else, they're going to beat a drum about you. If they pulling out the trumpet on somebody else, they're going to pull the trumpet out on you. If they bring out the flute and the saxophone and the cymbals on somebody else, they're going to do the same thing about you. So you got to be careful who you ask asking help for. You got to be careful who you pouring your heart out to. Because at the end of the day, if you do that, if you know for a fact they did it to somebody else, just believe they're going to do you the same way. Amen? Amen. Verse 2. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as some of your so-called friends do, as some of your co-workers do, as some of your supervisors do, as some of your family members do, as some of these pastors do the same thing too. They already got their trumpet in their pocket. You might not notice their trumpet, but they have their trumpet close, close by them. They can't help themselves. They can't hold work. They can't wait to announce your situation. They can't announce. They can't wait to announce your problem. They can't wait to announce and tell the whole world what you're going through, what you're struggling in, how you're going through debt, how, how, how you're behind in your rent, how you're behind on your car payment, how your husband cheating on you, how your wife don't love you no more, how your kids is all managed. They can't wait to pull their trumpet out. They can't wait to get their flute out. They can't wait to get their drums and beat on it. They can't wait to make a hip-hop song, a country and western song, an R&B song. They can't wait. Until they announce your situation. So why are you going to do them like that? Good God don't matter. On the streets to be honored by men. Jesus, I tell you the truth. They have received their reward in full. There it is. Not my words, but God's words. God already know who the people who carry their trumpets with all day long. He already know who carry their flutes. He already know who got their drums. He already know who got their cymbals. So that's why I say be very careful and be very mindful. He know what you're going through. So my point I'm making to you right now today, if you are struggling, if you're in need of anything, the only person I'm telling you right now today to ask is Jesus. Because you ain't got to worry about Jesus pulling the trumpet out on you. You ain't got to worry about Jesus pulling out the flute on you. You don't have to worry about Jesus getting the drums and beating on you. You didn't got to worry about Jesus getting the cymbals and spreading your, spreading your business. You can trust Jesus. You ain't got to worry about that. You ain't got to worry about Jesus doing you wrong. You ain't got to worry about Jesus doing you dirty. You ain't got to worry about Jesus going on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Periscope, Twitter, and telling everybody what's going on with you. You ain't got to worry about that. I learned my lesson right there one time before. 
I told my wife, I started to struggle. Ain't got nothing to do with no pride. Ain't have nothing to do with that. Because I know if I tell somebody or confide somebody what I'm going through, I'm hurting. I already know they got their truth. I already know they got their trumpets with them. They might not know that I know, but I know they got their trumpets. I know they have their flutes. I know they have their cymbals. I know they have their drums. I know they have their mixtapes. I know they have their records so they can scratch. I know they can't wait to announce what I'm going through, what I'm facing, what I'm dealing with. Because you ain't going to do me like that again. You did me like that one time. It was shame on me. But you'll never give me like that the second time. I promise you, my brothers, my sisters, for the ones who done you wrong, for the ones who did you like that, God is giving you his word right now. He is giving you his promise right now. They have already received their reward in full. They already received it. The point is, my first point, if you don't want to do it, just don't do it. If you don't have the right intentions on doing it, don't do it. If your heart is not into it, don't do it. My second point, be careful and be mindful who you sharing your information with because everybody's heart is not like your heart. Be careful and be mindful who you share your information with because everybody's heart is not like your heart. They can't wait to blow your information all around the world. They can't wait. It's something about them. It's something's already in them. They can't wait. They, they itching for you to tell them something. My third point. If you need help for anything, the only person that you can call on, count on, depend on, rely on, is Jesus. That's it. That's my three points. He's the only person. But you didn't have to do me like that. You didn't have to do my brother like that. You didn't have to do my sister like that. You didn't have to do that young man like that. You didn't have to do that young lady like that. But you walk around smiling. But I tell you what, every part, every person that done that, you will reap what you sow. The same way that you will nestle that person, problem, the way that you were blowing that trumpet, the way that you were blowing on that flute, the way that you was hitting them drums, the way that you, the way how you was blowing in that tuba, the way that you was hitting those piano keys, somebody can do you the same way, but it's going to be twice as worse. Somebody going to do you the same way, but it's going to be twice as worse. You didn't have to do me like that. You didn't have to tell my business like that, so-called friend. You didn't have to sit there and do me like that, supervisor. You didn't have to do me like that, co-worker. You didn't have to do me like that, family member. You didn't have to do me like that, in-law. And you didn't have to do me like that, pastor, or reverend, or bishop, or apostle, or whatever you call You didn't have to do me like that, first lady. You didn't have to do me like that, church. You didn't have to do me like that. You was wrong. I got feelings too. I didn't want everybody to know my personal business. If I did, I would have told everybody. I didn't want everybody to know what I was going through. If I did, I would have told everybody. I didn't want everybody to know they ain't had no way to stay. If I did, I would have told everybody. I didn't want everybody to know that my husband had an affair on me. But if I did, I would have told everybody. I didn't want everybody to know that my wife wanted, wanted her ex-boyfriend again. If I did, I would have told everybody. I didn't want everybody to know how my child was acting up in school. If I did, I would have told everybody. I didn't want everybody to know I was living in the dark. If I did, I would have told everybody. But you didn't have to do me like that. You was dead wrong. Rotten to the core. You didn't have to do me like that. But it's okay. It's okay though. Because God told me. He gave me his word. And he gave me his promise. That you. Has already received your full reward. Not a little bit of it. Not half of it. But he said that you have received your full Reward that you would not receive a blessing from your heavenly Father God, because you already got it by announcing. What goes around, come around. The same way how you announce my situation, somebody gonna do you out there, but twice as worse. But I'll be praying for you though. I don't forgive you though, but it's okay. But you didn't have to do him like that. You didn't have to do her like that. You didn't have to do that young man or that young lady like that. They got feelings too. I don't know who this word for today. I don't know who this message for today. But if this word's for you, and if this message for you, and you're going through something like that, because somebody announced your problem, your situation, God already gave you his word right now. God just spoken to you right now to let you know that they already received that full reward. Not a little bit of it, not half, but the full thing. 
Amen. Amen. Just forgive them and just pray for them and keep moving forward. I know that you're hurting right now. I know it's making you feel a certain kind of way right now because now everybody knows what's going on with you. The church know what's going on with you. People at the job know what's going on with you. Your family members know what's going on with you. In-laws know what's going on with you. The neighborhood know what's going on with you. People at the job know what's going on with you. People at the church, I mean, at the grocery store know what's going on with you. Social media know what's going on with you right now. And I know it's making you feel a certain type of way. But God said, don't worry about that. I got you. I got you. They already got it, what they receive. But he's got you, and he got you covered. Believe that. Trust that. I went through the same thing, so I know exactly what you're going through. My word for you today, you didn't have to do me like that. You didn't have to do me like that. Amen? Amen. Before I close, can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life, to guide us, direct us, use us. And I believe right now today, by us praying this simple little prayer, that God is already working everything got in our life for now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me, or leave me a comment. My YouTube channel is withers.lt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Continue to pray for one another and continue to put your faith and trust in Jesus. He will make a way out of no way. And even though it seems like it's never going to happen, it will happen. We're in this thing forever. Long we, long we holding on to him, we don't let go. He ain't going to let us go. I love y'all, my brothers, my sisters. It's Minnesota LT. Stay blessed. Amen.